right, as you can see, there is a lot of gear here and we're gonna be going through it in this video. I'm gonna walk you through all the gear that I'm gonna be using for an upcoming photography shoot, as well as renting out some of my gear, mainly speaker systems, microphone systems, and some lighting. So we're gonna go through all of that in this video. If you're new here, hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button. Welcome for those of you all that are actually watching this live on Amazon. Appreciate you guys for being here. I do have my Amazon chat window open. So if you have questions as I go through any of this equipment, definitely feel free to put those comments and questions in the chat. And I'm also going to link to everything for you guys. So just click below this video and you'll be able to click on any of these products and check them out for yourself if they're of interest to you. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to be using my iPad to click through our Amazon product carousel and go through all of this gear with you now. We are going to kind of fly through this if we can, because I do actually have to pack this stuff up for the gig this week. But I do want to share with you guys what I'm using. And it also helps make sure that I have everything that I need for this uh, particular gig that we're actually going to be producing for this client. So let's get started with the camera bag itself. This is the most most so i think that's how you say a camera bag and this is my go-to bag that i've been using for i want to say about the last year year and a half here um this is the bag inside it has the dividers the foam dividers here so we can customize uh the different uh lengths that we need, different shapes that we need for the gear that we're going to actually put in here. Uh, this does have the hard backing on it, so that's nice to help protect the gear that's in here and plenty of padding on the inside and customization that I can put in uh, any particular order for here. So I do have some stuff in here. We're not going to talk about everything that I actually have in the bag right now, mainly the, the good stuff, I would say. There is a zip pocket here in the bag so i have some accessories in here i have some adapters in here some cold shoe mount adapters some cables little adapter things that you never know if you would need them on a particular outing and in here you have also a zipper section up at the top part of here and i just keep an hdmi cable in here all the time sometimes i'll keep some other accessories in here but mainly hdmi cable i tend to keep up there so down here, again, just accessories in my bag that are customizable throughout the bag itself. And then one of the things that I noticed last time when I was showing this bag off that I didn't even realize is that there's an actual zipper here compartment right here on the front. And this is actually where I keep my lotion. If you guys watch one of my other videos, I do always have my lotion with me. So I keep that here on this part. And you do have nice padding back here as well. So this bag is really sturdy and I, I, I really like this bag. There's also some zipper here on the side. So if you have little small accessories, put those in here. I actually have a pair of headphones in here. So wired headphones as my backups. So I'm big on having backups upon backups upon backups because you just never know if something doesn't want to cooperate with you on production day. So that's in here on this side. So here's the bag that I use for the gigs. Now we'll jump over to the lenses that I'm gonna be using for this particular shoot. Now, uh, this is a photography assignment. This is what I was uh, contracted to do, was actually take pictures. So it's heavy photography loaded uh, for what I need to bring. Hey, good morning, good to see you this morning. So here I have the Sony 70 to, or 24 to 70 lens. This is probably gonna be my primary lens for this photo shoot. This is the G Master 2. So this is the newest version of the 24 to 70. This is a powerful, uh, powerful lens to use. It's, it's, uh, it does a lot. So I use this pretty much all the time here when I'm taking pictures for YouTube thumbnails, product photography, I took some pictures of my daughter yesterday, and this is the lens that I was using for those pictures. So this is gonna be probably the main lens that I do use for this particular shoot. 
Now I do need to find my adapter there. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and just pop this off because this does need to get packed up. So I like these Sony cameras and bodies that allow us to interchange our lenses and easily just take them off and pack them away. So this is gonna be the main lens that I take here. And I always use my hood just to protect my lens, flip that around, and then I can easily pack this away into my bag. So that's lens number one that I'm taking with me for my closer shots. Lens number two that I'm taking with me is the 70 to 200 F 2.8 version two. And this is my 70 to 200 for those longer distance shots. So this is going to be, this This photo shooting is, is uh, red carpet. It's uh, having basically portraitures done. It's having the event covered. So I'm gonna need a little bit of everything. Close up shots for my portrait type of shooting and then for the more distant shots, the 70 to 200. And this is the one I primarily use for my outdoor events, sports. This is my go-to for those uh, types of things. So this lens is coming with me. So those are the only two lenses that I'm taking with me. Now I don't have it in the product carousel, but I also keep the uh, teleconverter with me too. So this is a 2X teleconverter. Really don't see me needing this for this particular event, but it just stays in my bag for more so the sports events that I do shoot with the camera. All right, next up in the carousel is the workhorse. I'm gonna be taking the Sony Alpha 1 to do this gig. Uh, this thing has 50 megapixels, so it's gonna have some super high quality uh, some pictures when we get done with this. Uh, I'll take this off for right now. This is our flash that's actually on top. We'll talk about that here. We can actually talk about that right after we get done this. Uh, but this is the, the beast that I'm taking out. This thing does 30 frames a second. So you can shoot and you just hear that that uh, that shutter just click away. Click, 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 click. So it doesn't miss a shot. So I really love this for our sports action. But I'll be taking this for this particular assignment here. And... This is has two SD card slots on the side so I can have backups so I can actually shoot and shoot video on one card. I can shoot photos on, just on the other card. I can shoot video on both cards. I can shoot them where they are just redundant of each other. So you have different options with how you use this battery slot down here. And then over here on the side, we have our audio interface. So we can plug in our microphone here, headphone jack. HDMI connections here for video out, USB-C for charging. Uh, so this thing is a powerhouse of a camera. So this is gonna be our main workhorse. Now I'm also gonna be bringing along the Sony FX30, which I actually have sitting on the other side of the room here. So let me go grab one of them. Um, this is the Sony FX30 that I mainly use FX30 for video because it is a video first type of camera, but it also can take pictures. And so that I'm not just out there and maybe the A1 doesn't want to work or just something going on where I need a backup camera. The FX30 is actually going to be my backup camera for this particular shoot. And so I'm going to make sure I have two cameras all set, ready to go. Batteries charged up. Batteries are actually charging up right now uh, on the on the floor here. So those are the two cameras that will be going with me. The cards, SD cards that I'm going to be using. One is going to be the, did I take it out? Oh, it's in the charger or it's in my camera over there. I'm going to be using the Sony 160 gig uh, uh, SD card and that's our CF Express type A card. So the super fast writing speeds Again, I use that card mainly for the sports photography, so I don't need super fast write speeds for this particular event, but that's the card that typically stays in the A1. And I also like to take my SanDisk cards out there because the SanDisk cards um, are pretty affordable and I, can, I have a bunch of these SanDisk cards. So they are actually all sitting in a case over here. Oh, did I move the case? I think I moved the case. So let me go grab the case because the case is actually over here on the other desk because I had that ready to go. So I'll keep all of my 
SD cards in this, this case here. And this particular case can hold 12 SD cards in it. So this will be our go-to case. And I'm actually gonna go through these cards and make sure that I clean them up before we go out. So a reminder to myself to keep that close by. Um, the next thing I have in the carousel is mainly for that first card I showed you, which is the SD card reader itself. So if you do have the CF Express cards, you definitely need a reader for those cards. So I do keep that with me. And next up, to hold the camera, it's up here. I have this strap, and this is a wrist strap for the camera. So let's see here, do I have it? Yeah, so I'll just take this and I'll feed it through and make sure it's nice and tight there. I think I did it backwards. Let me do it again. Cause I gotta go through one time before. So this is going to make sure that I don't accidentally drop the camera cause we don't want to do that. And so this is just my wrist strap that I take with me. Okay, so now I can just tighten that up here on my wrist and have my camera on my wrist for easy access. Again, you know, after you're holding these cameras for a long time, you don't want your hands to get tired and you just drop it. So having it on the wrist strap is just that added level of protection, that added level of mental comfort <laughs> so that you don't drop your, drop your gear. Uh, now, this will actually be more so probably put on my other camera because I like to use my shoulder strap if I know I'm going to for my primary camera I'll just say it that way uh, for longer events I definitely don't want to hold this all the time I want this camera to just kind of be close to me and hang with me but I'm not going to be using this mainly but that I do keep that for uh, you know smaller time frame shoots or you know just walking outside the park type of stuff so that's that one, but I am going to be using the Peak Design. And the Peak Design anchors I have on here already, and you'll see how easy these are to use. You just put the anchors on your camera, and then the strap itself just clips right on the anchors, like so. And just like that, now I have my camera ready to go and throw it across me and I'm ready to record for those long, long time periods, have some, uh, have some comfort of not having to hold the camera all the time. And this is the primary setup that I'm going with. And this is, has a couple different configurations, how you can, you know, put it across your body. So this is, this is definitely, uh, one of those accessories that's kind of a must have for me when it comes to photography. This isn't the only camera strap that I like to use. There's some other ones out there too, but this is the one that always just kind of stays in the bag with me. So the Peak Design strap. And we'll clean up all this stuff and make it look all nice and pretty and tight, and tight away here a little bit later on. So everything I'm talking about right now is listed below this video. So definitely feel free to check it out as I go and grab the dust cleaner. So before I start the shoot, I'm going to make sure my lenses are clean. So I keep the dust cleaner in here. But one easy way to do it is just hold your lens upside down and blow up. That way the dust comes down and you can get it all out. So dust cleaner needs to stay in there. And because this is a photography shoot, I am taking the FJ80, which is actually on right now. It's on the uh, Westcott um, do I have that in here? Yeah, so I got the FJ80 right here. It's mounted on a bracket. Um, this can mount directly on my phone or on my camera if I wanted to, just right on the cold shoe mount. Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to do the setup just because I haven't seen the, the entire setup yet. They're actually doing that today, so I'll get a chance to go through. So I may use it on my camera, but I'm probably going to prefer to use it on our Westcott 
uh, rapid dish here. So if we're gonna be standing in front of a signage or something like that, I probably just put it on here. If I feel like I have to be more mobile, I can easily take it off and just throw it right on my camera and then I have the flash with me. So it really depends on the room conditions if I'm gonna need the flash or not because we are bringing some lighting and I think the venue is gonna be pretty well lit just in general. But the Westcott FJ82, Westcott uh, Rapid Dish is going to be what I'm gonna be using for my lighting. And as you can see, this is actually sitting on a C stand. So the C stand is pretty sturdy here. Um, and this will be coming along with me for that shoot as well. All right, so let's jump back over here into our carousel of products. And let's see, did we grab everything? Just about one more thing with the flash is our FJX3S. The S just stands for Sony. Uh, so this just goes onto our camera. And this is our flash to talk to our speed light and make sure that we have it synced and ready to go. So both of these do need to be charged before I leave here today because I just used them yesterday to make sure that they were good to go because I haven't used my flash in a little while. So we got that. Um, and I think that's it for the photography side of what I'm gonna be bringing. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they are also asking for some accessories uh, for this event that they're willing to rent out from me. And lighting is one of those. So I'm gonna be bringing the GVM uh, RGB light kit. And it's actually the light kit that I'm using right now. So if we zoom out a little bit here and what do we have? One, we have one light there. I feel like I'm missing a light. One light there, one light there. Okay, I'm trying to figure out where all my lights are. So let's move this camera over to one of the lights right there. So that's the actual light right there. It's a three pack light that I'm gonna be bringing with me. Hey, what's going on, Jeff? Good to see you in the comments, man. We gotta catch up. Um, that's a three pack light that I'm gonna be bringing with me for this event and um, they allow for your white light and then they also allow for the RGB color spectrum of light. And an example of that is this light back here, which is also part of this set where I can just dial in different colors. And for the most part, we're going to probably just be using the white because I do have some other RGB lights that I'm gonna be bringing for stage lighting to have behind the stage and to turn it to the brand colors of that company. So that'll be a fun experience. So my goal is to be able to document this particular event behind the scenes. There is some security at this event, so not sure how much I can actually record and document, but I'm gonna do my best for it. So that's what we have, I believe, for the lighting side of it that we are gonna be renting out to them. And then for speaker system, I'm torn on whether or not I will actually bring this speaker system because looking at some of the venue pictures, the event space is pretty large. Now, these are the Pile PA DJ speakers. Now, the reason I got these is because one, I just need some speakers for local events myself because typically I'll work with a DJ or an audio engineer that has this equipment, but there's some cases where like they're not available or I just kind of just need to have some of my own just in case. So I picked up these on Amazon. This is from Pile. This is an all-in-one system. So you have your audio mixer built in and then you have this handle and on each side of the handle, you can actually put your speakers on it. So I have one speaker here. I'll move this so you guys can see it a little bit better. So I have one speaker here and one speaker over there, just off frame. But these speakers just slap onto here so you have this all-in-one carry of the speaker system. Now, this speaker system isn't the most powerful. It's only a 300-watt speaker system, so this is more so good for local classrooms, uh, smaller venue spaces. The space that I'm going to be at is a wide open, almost like warehouse type of space. So these aren't probably going to power it enough. But when I get a chance to go over this afternoon, I'll know whether or not I need to bring these or grab some from a local DJ that I work a lot with and use his speakers instead. But if you're looking for a smaller portable system for a small smaller space, 
this is a system that you can check out. So I have that marked in the carousel. Um, and this is from Pile. It does come with the stands. Now these stands, as you can see right here beside me, the height. This is the max height of the stands. I'm about 5'6", and this is the max height of the stand. So if you need taller stands, then you would definitely want to get some additional ones. Uh, but these stands are included with it. And again, these are more so, this is a budget system, so don't expect the world from them. They do work, they're operational, but they're a budget system. So I wouldn't use these in a professional environment, especially long-term use. But if you're looking for a starter kit, this is an option. Hey, Lillian, thanks for following me here on Amazon. For those of you guys that are watching this live, thank you for following me here on Amazon. If you guys have questions, let me know in the comments section um, and I'll answer any questions that you do have. Kind of just want to go through everything that I need to pack up for this photo shoot and this video. Um, well, I won't be, I do some video of myself. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, video, lighting, and audio mainly. And so doing this live with you guys gives me a chance to make sure that I kind of have everything mentally as I get to ready to pack this up. All right. Next up, I have some adapters, and this is a two pack of XLR adapters. Now, the reason I got these adapters is because this audio interface takes XLR connections. However, these microphones right here are quarter inch adapters. I believe they're quarter inches. And so what I needed was an adapter to be able to connect the uh, receiver from these microphones into here so the receivers are actually being charged right now but i'll grab one of them so that you can see i'm not sure if i have yeah i do have these microphones in the carousel they're actually the next product so i'm gonna grab one of these adapters here it's actually charging on the floor i'm trying to charge all the stuff in the limited charging spaces that i have all right so this is one of the adapters for the microphones that are in the product carousel coming up next and just plug this adapter into this adapter and now i can turn on the microphones and bring in audio out and through the speaker so had a chance to test that yesterday and all is well so there's actually two different sets of microphones that i'm going to be bringing both of these are by xzl uh, i will say the second one here the blue and blue microphones tend to work better um, they're just louder in my opinion and I'm going to need as much uh, audio power as I possibly can get out of these speakers since these are only 300 watt speakers. But the blue pair of microphones tend to give me the better audio quality that I want. Now, we'll be bringing another pair of microphones. I just don't have those in the carousel, but I do plan on bringing another backup pair as well. Uh, like I mentioned, I will be doing a little video, uh, mainly of myself. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to set up some stuff remotely and kind of uh, discreetly out of the way because I don't have a camera person follow me. But I will be bringing my Osbot Tail Air. And these are really cool cameras for auto tracking. So I'm going to set the Osbot Tail Air on a tripod, turn it on, set up auto tracking and let it follow me around the room as I'm doing my setup. And then tomorrow on the day of the event, I actually have it recording me as well, uh, tracking me as I'm walking around. But however, I'm walking between outside and inside into different rooms, so it's not gonna be able to walk along with me, but when I'm in certain spaces, it'll be able to follow me. So this is the Osbot Tail Air AI tracking camera. So these are all charged up. SD card slot for internal recording. So that's gonna be uh, a way that I can capture some of the behind the scenes content as I'm going throughout the day. So bring in that. I'm also gonna be bringing the brand new Shure Move mics that Shure sent over to me and um, use this to capture the audio so I have good clean audio. I took these out this weekend, took my stepson over to the BrickFest that has a whole bunch of Legos and all that stuff at the local Expo Center and mic'd up him and I was his cameraman essentially. So I mic'd him up. I'm running the camera, turned on noise cancellation, and the audio quality is phenomenal. Um, you don't hear a ton of that 
conference background noise, you really just hear his isolated voice. So I expect these to work really well. Now, I did notice my shirt got bent up, so hopefully it wasn't rubbing against me. But I will, will be using this lapel system that I'm wearing right now and micing my own self up for this event. Uh, the case I'll be taking and packing some of this lighting gear up and stuff in will be my Pelican uh, 1650 case. This case actually it has black with red handles, which is actually the same color scheme of my company logo. So it just actually works out pretty well. But they do have all black cases. So the Pelican 1650, this one has foam in it. I'm probably gonna take out all the foam to maximize the amount of space since I don't have anything that needs to be uh, super protected in there because everything that I'm packing in there already has its own bags um, and levels of protection in it. And so taking out the foam, I'll have extra space in the case. Um, and I'm not going that far. It's not, I'm not taking this to some of the venues I've taken it in the past where I've got to roll it down rocks and hills and just to get to the location. So this is pretty much going to be in the back of the truck and then from out the truck down the pavement <laughs> and into the building. So pretty, pretty easy setup for this one. I'm also gonna be bringing my own power and I'm gonna be bringing this unit here, which is the Blue Yeti power station. So this is going to be running some of the audio equipment. If there's no local power I can get access to, this is gonna be running some of my own equipment. If I need to charge up anything, my laptop, my cell phone, anything I need to run extra power off, I just like to take this with me because it's small, it's compact, it's extra power. You can never have enough power, especially uh, as a video producer. Just realized my light isn't on over there. I didn't turn it on today. Uh, what else we got here? We have our newer four pack of batteries. Now these are actually being charged right now. Let me see if I can show you a shot of the floor. I know th the floor might not be super interesting, but you can see my feet. Uh, I can't quite get there. Let's see, let me zoom out. Nope, can't quite get there. So like just out of frame right there, I have some batteries that are actually being charged. Let me grab them. Now those GVM lights that I mentioned earlier take NPF batteries. So I'll be using these batteries. This is a four pack and powering on the lights. And it also, there's something else that I was going to use these for too, but I have not only this four pack, but I have another two pack. So all these batteries uh, will help in not having to run cables if possible. Oh, I know what I'm saying. I'm going to take my other light that's over there. Um, I have a panel light that I'm going to take too. So having, having batteries and that power unit allow me to not have to run cables. Um, I do have some extension cables, but I don't want to have to run cables everywhere. Uh, so I'm going to run battery off, off those lights, or run the lights off of battery, I should say. And then because this event isn't super long, I don't need a tremendous amount of power, but I do expect to have plenty of battery power to get me through this event. I believe it's only about three hours, if that. Um, I'll be there a little bit earlier and stay a little bit later to set up, but the actual event itself is only a couple hours, so it's really quick. Uh, let's see, is there anything else in the carousel? I think that's it. So we flew through the carousel of uh, products here on Amazon. I'm going to get packed up, make sure everything is charged, ready to go, packed away. I did all the testing yesterday. If you guys enjoy this type of content, make sure you do hit that follow button, subscribe button. And I'll see you guys after this event. So I'll see you in the next video.